lot of people that never uh, were interested in fishing before, and uh -huh. you can tell a lot, of, you can certainly tell by the, the difference in the crowds that you see on the, on the lakes. Oh, so there's a lot more fishermen out there. Quite a few more. Because of that. That makes it a little tougher for the more serious ones, right? Or because... It makes it, yeah, it's... Uh, although, well, do you think it's hurting the, uh, hurting the fishing, or... Yes, yeah. The reason being, I was down to visit Terry in North Carolina. There was a minister that fished with us quite a bit, too, who lives right in the area. Uh-huh. And he told, we were mentioning about the different contests that are going on constantly. And, uh, he said uh, there's one particular area where they release the fish after the wave. Stinks for the whole season because there's so many fish that don't survive. Don't survive. Huh. A big percentage of them die off that don't survive after waiting uh, in a plastic bag for the wave. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, at 80 or 90 degree water, and uh, that's probably pretty hard on them. Uh, they, they would like you to think that uh, all of these fish survive, but uh, obviously they don't. They, they don't. They keep on the water too long. Right. Hold them in a plastic bag, which is, you know, really relaxing. Mm -hmm. Sure. And they've been bouncing around for the best part of the day in somebody's life. Well, so I would say, I would say, uh, we've got a poor survival rate. I, I'd uh, have to take this. Uh, Minister at his word. He seemed like a quite honest fellow. Uh huh. Yeah. And he's a he's a local. He lives right there, you know. So we fish with the guy. He's a great fisherman, and mm -hmm. he knows what he's talking about. Uh, it's obvious that uh, for the amount of fishermen you get out here, everybody's got a sounder and a map nowadays. And uh, if even half of these guys come by and just take one or two. Mm -hmm. Day to day, it's, it's bound to have an effect. An effect so on many, the fishery. So many fish there to begin. With. Yeah, that's true. If they keep pecking away at them, they're still there. Now, we we don't keep any fish. Terry and I fished uh, probably almost every weekend last summer. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day out of the weekend, and uh, I think we had one fish die on us. But anything else is returned to the water alive. Right back, right yeah. away. Catch them another day, you know. Yeah, that's true. You like to take the kids out there. You got different friends you want to take out. And if you keep taking the fish out of there, they won't be there. Yeah, that's true. I'm going to bring us in on the edge of this point again here. We'll work up the side of this. Okay. Okay. So they do say there's a pretty good population of bass well, in here. Yeah, I guess, I guess it's supposed to be a good population of bass and uh, some larger bass in this lake. Now you're on this second bar working this little or finger, I guess you'd call well, it, wouldn't you? Just a little finger sticking on it. And you're, you've been working this a uh, fair amount. You're just, you, does this look a little better than the other one? No, not really. Uh, one up one side and back and down the other so far around. Uh, going out near the end and around the corner uh, probably look a little better than this one. Drops off a little deeper? Out here there's a pretty good drop off. It runs off from about 18 feet. Oh, okay. We'll check that out again. So you're actually fishing both of these bars at the same time? Pardon? Both You're fishing both of these fingers at the same time? Well, I'm going to go from one off and follow the break the best I can. Yeah, and okay. Run right into the other one. Sure. Pretty close together. This is one here, and then there's one right across the end over here. So, now, you were you worked with Buck for how many years? Over A little over a year, I guess. Uh, Back in the 60s, I guess 
And he worked up in the Chicago area quite a bit, didn't he, in those days? Well, Terry and I, Terry and I were uh, fishing lakes in uh, three of the states, probably uh, Wisconsin, Illinois, and uh, four states, really, Indiana and Michigan. Oh. We were based out of Chicago, but we used to uh, spread out into all these other states looking around for some good lakes. Mm -hmm. We did a little uh, Lake Michigan fishing uh, for coho, like I mentioned. Uh, we had, I think we had four or five fish at the end of that day, as I remember, that weighed like 12 pounds, 10, 12 pounds. They were all oh, wow. pretty fair ones, you know. Yeah. And it certainly attracted the fishermen. <laughs> <laughs> so you had a few. Enough. You could have just about walked over the boats after a while, Arthur. Is that right? After you guys brought those fish in, huh? Well, I, I, a lot of people were catching them. There was, a, there was a crowd there when we got there. Oh, okay. And, uh, neither one of us had ever fished for coals before, so uh, we had to try and figure them oh, out. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. Figure out what it took to catch them. For the most part, it was a little slower speed than you would use for bass on the, the coals. Mm -hmm. Or at least at that, at, at that time. Anything else? Yeah. A lot of people are uh, very individualistic, and uh, but most of the true spoon pluggers are uh, the guys that follow the the known procedures and the rules that go with it. The guidelines? The guidelines, yeah, because these uh, things don't change. Yeah, yeah, these no. are basic facts about the fishing. nature of the fish, and they don't change. They don't change. What changes is the fishermen sometimes. Yeah, okay. We're just talking about it. Some of these guys get their own ideas and like to add things, but uh, the fish don't change. So the basic, the basics, and the, the facts on fishing are the same, and were the same for millions of years. Then. Do you think that some, you know, it, it's it's hard to, to continue with uh, the concepts of buck for some people because you know you're getting everybody else changing and, and saying this and that. Is I'll that tell you what. I'll tell you what throws a lot of people off is watching. A lot of this stuff on the weekend, oh. on television, yeah. they assume that all these so-called pros know all about it, and uh, in actuality, these guys are fishing for spawning fish almost all of the time, mm -hmm. of the season. And it's kind of a shame that they do that. Yeah. But it's a, it's a big money business. They're selling you the whole package. There's a lot of... Boat, the motor, you know. Yeah, that's true. The entire package, and... Uh, all the fishing tackle, you know, uh, to go fishing uh, their way nowadays, you've got to have a, a pretty good bankroll. We're talking about a $35,000 boat to tackle. Yeah. You're equipped with uh, yeah, the that's true. and everything. It's not uh, something inexpensive. There's only an expensive bank. Mm -hmm. And all the TV that goes with it, naturally, this keeps people interested in it. Yeah. Whether it be right or wrong. Yeah, they... You got yeah, a fish? I, I think I caught You got them. fish. Maybe you want to wind your line. I will wind my line. Oh, okay. Got. Either way is fine. It works to put the sun a little better on it. Another fish. All right. You just take your time bringing them in. You don't get too excited. Sometimes I get too excited. <laughs> That's nice you can do that. Oh, we got another bass. Oh, all right. Hey. Look at him jumping right Lively. I'll see. Okay. Yeah, nice healthy fish. He really took that too. He sure did.
<laughs> okay, nice job. That's what we're after. Uh, 250. 250. All right. Way to go. You're going back over that little uh, finger. You say the brake is about seven, eight foot here? Well, right now it's at about six feet here. About six, okay. It's just a little, it's just a little finger. It doesn't uh, really seem to be. It's not that great a piece of structure. It doesn't show that much, huh? Hard to argue with the fish, huh? That's right, if he's there. <laughs> oh, you say this this doesn't have a real deep water close no, it to doesn't. it. No. All of these back bays that are shallow will have a certain amount of fish that stay in them. But uh, it's not the kind of situation where you can run into a nice school bass. Oh, I see. Okay. This would be, uh, it'd be straggler fishing. Back in okay. The, it's about back, the same thing as straggler fish. Back in the bay it's here. One here, one there, you know. Yeah. Okay. Find the deep water right there. The bigger bass, you you look for the deepest. Yeah, they don't they don't carry uh, too far from the deep water. So if you're hunting just for the biggest bass, you probably wouldn't uh, be fishing here a lot. You'd be well, out. I'm talking any any fish about four pounds or bigger, nine times out of ten, you're going to find deep water very close to the catcher. Deepest in the area. Yeah. Usually it'll be a bar where there's deep water connected to it. Okay. And the deepest water in the area, that's usually right on the money. Okay. Everything. I said it's a shame, but the truth does not always sell the best. Okay. Buck, Buck has got it all down true. You know, he's he's giving you the truth, but uh, I think a lot of this stuff they got on TV on the weekends is uh, that sells better. High pressure sell, sales in that. It's yeah. It's got nothing to do with what they're selling. Holes out there uh, hanging very loose to the structure. If you were Anywhere within a block or two, it seemed like that they'd be in a big area. Big area. Yeah. It wouldn't stop right at the break like the bass did. But the bass are right on the break then. They really relate yeah. close. Yeah, if you stay right on the break, this is where you can locate most of the bass most of the time. So you like to fish Michigan and lakes? We did years ago. I haven't been over there now in uh, about two years, I think. Okay. But, uh, Which lakes were your favorite? Lakes. Kind of seepy lakes? Secret lakes. Oh, secret lakes. Yeah. Okay. Well, but, uh, we can keep them that way if you want. <laughs> no, I don't even get over there anymore. And, and they, all these things change. Uh, yeah. A lot of the lakes we fished in are not the same now Different. at all. Different now. Yeah. Nowadays you got this heavy fishing pressure just about everywhere. Mm hmm. You think a lot of the heavy boat traffic uh, makes for some lakes uh, where the fish are not too active in the daytime and go into nighttime patterns? Uh, or not necessarily? I don't think the, the boat traffic does that as much as clear water and, and uh, clear water oh. uh, has more to do with fish moving at night. At nighttime, yeah. Okay. Yeah, some of the lakes. Uh, it is so clear that they're really tough to fish successfully. And uh, my guess is that uh, the fish will be moving at nighttime. Mm -hmm. They're very late, right at dusk, you know. Yeah. Because we've put in some long days on some clear lakes, and uh, it's learning the hard way. It's, uh, you're, you're trying to tackle the toughest lake in town, you know. Yeah. It's you ever easy to do. done any nighttime trolling for spoon uh, with spoon plugs? Oh, I'm usually wore out after a day's fishing. <laughs> yeah, you take, don't need any more. tomorrow. That's right. <laughs> don't need it. You're putting yourself on the right type of a lake to begin with, you know. 
this was one of those drinking water clear lakes, it would be really, really hard to catch a fish because the sunlight keeps the fish from moving out. How much more difficult would a clear water lake be than a lake like this? I mean, quite a bit difficult. Uh, quite a bit more difficult because uh, a lot of times it means the fish will stop. If they move at all, they'll stop at the very deep breaks. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about fishing 20, 25 feet of water before you even find out if the fish are there. Uh, even active. the small ones then. So it's, it's just hard, harder to locate them. Uh -huh. they, they move for a shorter period of time. Uh, you're, you're setting yourself up for a tough task mm -hmm. fishing the real clear lakes. It's like giving a choice. I'll take a lake with color anytime. Uh -huh. So you wherever wherever you go, you always check the watercolor first. That's yes, number I do. one. Yes, I do. Before I even put the boat in. Most of the time I uh, will have heard something about a lake from someone to begin with, you know, mm -hmm. it's a fishing lake or whatever. But uh, if I'm on a vacation and uh, gonna do some fishing, first thing I do is look at the watercolor. A lot of times, there's a lot of different situations you find on lakes where uh, basically the clearest water will be found by the dam. The headwaters of the lake will be more, will be an area where you'll find more fires as well. Uh -huh. uh, and usually the water color in the headwaters will be much better. Some people say that, you know, that's more of a challenge, so they want to try the clear water lake to see if they can catch any it's fish. It's fine if they got that much time. Yeah, if they got that much time. want to do it. Uh, <laughs> You're out here to... I look at it, there's only so many weekends in a lifetime. Yeah, that's true. If I work all week and I'm going to take uh, my girl out or take the kids out, I want them to have a fun time and not try to, yeah. not try to fish the toughest lake in town. Yeah, that's, that's the way I look at it. Yeah. Yeah, there, you can catch fish out of any of those lakes. Uh huh. If you want to work that hard for them. To me, it's it's not worth the effort. It's not worth the it's effort. It's a big disadvantage. Yeah. And why take why take the kids out there and uh, sit out there all day and, and catch nothing or miss about nothing? Mm hmm Well, you're going out there to have a good time, not a bad time. Yeah. How much do you? Uh put on uh, reputation of a lake as far as what the DNR says and what uh, the bait shops say and things like uh, that. I don't even check them out that much. Most of the time, uh, if I like the color of a lake, I'll find out for myself. Okay. Some... You don't always get an accurate report. Uh, DNR will sometimes take most of the fish out of a lake and put them somewhere else without letting anybody know about it. And you're out there fishing for just about no fish. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, if you happen on uh, the lake that they put the fish into, you might find excellent fishing. Sometimes all this can happen in a big hurry. Yeah, they right. do these things in a big hurry and nobody knows about it. <laughs> but uh, with me, it's probably just about the same as it is with you where I uh, listen to different friends of mine. Friends of mine are having good luck one place or another, then usually we'll go back and, go back and try fishing the fish same it. lake. Okay, makes sense. No, but a lot of people that I fish with through the years, the clear water lakes are, uh, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage if you take if you take the family out there, uh, unless they're going to fish for bluegills or panfish, they, they may get some of them, but to try and put them on with some big bass or big northerns, uh, Stack in the deck against yourself. Mm -hmm. Fish. You say all all that Buck has said in his book. Buck you, tells you the truth. You believe. Yes. Yeah, Buck, Buck's giving you the facts about the fish. And uh, like I said before, the truth isn't always the best sell. Uh, he's up again. Yeah. He's looking the eyes. Uh, nowadays you've got all these professional Especially done uh, fishing programs and they're out to sell you something. Uh, mm -hmm. Show you the truth about what it takes to fish successfully. 
why do you think the uh, it's just hard to sell the studying and classes on spoon plugging, isn't it? Is that one of the well, reasons? It's, uh, a lot of people expect to get everything easily, and learning this is like learning anything else. It takes some effort, and it takes some practice. Time on the water. And, yeah, and really it's up to the person that wants to learn it as to how fast you're going to learn it. Mm -hmm. The more time you're able to put in on the water and concentrate on that. It's like anything else. You you get the, uh, the basic ideas and uh, then you work on polishing up your old uh, fishing habit. So it's not just knowing the material, it's experiencing it, getting out. Oh, sure. I mean, the, the written sure. material. Your life experience is on the water uh, like anything else. The more you're out there, the more you learn. But you know, uh, it's nice to be able to pick the nice, the nice uh, fishing days to go fishing, but with most people, you know, you have to go fishing when you have the time to do it. Yeah, right. And it may be a sunny day and you don't have a choice in the matter. It's either go today or don't go at all. Yeah, uh, right. A lot of times you can enjoy a day on the water and you can do some exploring and check out spots that you hadn't checked out before and look look at them carefully and see if they look like the kind of spots you think are holding fish. So mm -hmm. when you come back on another day, I think we'll pull again. That 25 Merc really moves this boat, doesn't it? Uh, the Merc does real, real well uh, for a boat like this. Yeah. I like yeah. the Mercury, it's a pretty handy motor. Yeah, it seems to handle well, nice and quiet. I've got one at home that's a 1963 that I bought brand new. Still runs like brand new. Hmm. But your partner's been sitting down there catching yeah. all the big ones. He probably there. has. They're out here jawing, huh? <laughs> Well, now you you like to set the hook on the always, fish. Always set the hook. Always set the hook, but not overset. You don't want to rip it out of his mouth. No, uh, I like to give one give one good pop so you know you got the hook in him. Okay. Like you were saying that it's, uh, he's hooked so poorly, uh, you know you can't see what's going on. And if he's hooked that badly, uh, just as well if you lose him right off the bat. He's coming off anyway. Sure. Okay. Do you notice any? Uh, do you do any differently when you're working wire? I don't. I don't work with wire that often if I don't have to. Wire is a real direct uh, connection between you and the fish. Uh huh. There's a little bit more work involved with it. Right. Oh, yeah, so you can grab it in a hurry. Yeah, I set everything out where it's handy to get in. Okay, yeah, your tools and uh, cutters and everything, so great. Got a spare set here in case they would get lost. Oh, yeah, okay, great. Locate your spots by trolling, particularly if, if it's a lake close to home, uh, the one that you fish quite often. You can, you can locate the fish a lot quicker uh, by trolling, trolling. and then Give your spots a good look and learn learn uh, where to anchor your boat properly. Some of this only comes with a little bit of practice of trying it from one position or another. Mm -hmm. and only by trying it, uh, a lot of times you catch fish from one direction but not from another. So you learn the best approach to each individual spot. There's times when it doesn't seem to make any difference, but then again. There's a lot of spots where you have to hit them just right, or you won't get a strike. Uh-huh. I got a real nice one down there. On a 400. A four